Hey everybody, in this video we will talk about the newly added digital human hair shader. When we turn the camera perspective, the hair will have some flowing highlights. The highlights tend to flow realistically in the direction of the hair strands. Currently, the character is using the digital human shader, but the hair is still using a PBR shader. When I select the hair, you can see that it has two materials. You can manually switch to the digital human hair shader type under the texture settings, or you can use the convert object shader function to quickly change the material of the hair. With the exception of the scalp, the rest of the body is converted to digital human hair shaders as well. Like in this example, you'll see that the scalp is still using the PBR shader while the hair has been converted to the digital human hair shader. Because the hair shader has some transparency, when applied to the scalp, it can cause the entire head to shine. Therefore, digital human hair shader is not suitable for the scalp. As long as your material name has either the scalp or skull cap keyword, it will skip the material conversion process. If the name of the scalp geometry is missing these two keywords, then you should manually change its material back to PBR after the conversion process. Let's take a look at the parameters of the shader. First, notice the flow of the hair strands. For better observation, I will now intentionally lower the roughness value for the hair. You will notice the strong highlights on individual strands of the hair. When I turn the camera, the highlights will move along the direction of these strands. When we observe the hair texture, you will find that the UVs have a horizontal and vertical direction. Looking at the bump map makes this clear. We currently have a red and green texture map where red represents vertical UVs and green represents horizontal UVs. I'll put this map into the base color channel, that way we can differentiate the hair strands that go in vertical and horizontal directions. Inside the texture channels section, under the shader settings, you will find a hair tangent map channel. This channel represents the directional flow of the highlights on the hair strands. You can customize the flow of the highlights, which is related to the UV directions. The red channel represents the vertical UV direction, while the green channel represents the horizontal direction. Once I input this map and move the camera around, you'll notice that the green parts of the head have more accurate highlights. Now let's take a look at the parameters of the shader. I will use this long hair project to explain. There is a spotlight in the sink which I'll spin around to make the hair shine in various angles. Because this hair is composed of many materials, I can simply copy and paste the shader of material onto every single part of the hair with the same parameter values. I can also select and adjust multiple materials at once. This hair UV direction is vertical and like the previous example, it has both vertical and horizontal directions. There's a specular map inside the shader texture section, which will be automatically created once you convert the material to the digital human hair shader. Next, let's take a look at the parameters. The diffuse strength can be used to adjust the diffuse intensity for the hair. Tangent vector color and tangent map is used in tandem to determine the flow of the highlights. Red represents vertical direction while green represents horizontal direction. If the UVs are uniform, then adjusting the tangent vector color will be sufficient. For this example, the hair's UVs are all vertical, so I'll just need to adjust the tangent vector color to red. Next, let's look at the underlying principles behind the hair material. It behaves in a way similar to subsurface scattering. When a ray of light hits a hair strand, it will have three forms of light. A specular highlight that reflects directly, a transmission effect that penetrates into the hair, and a secondary specularity that penetrates the hair and is reflected back. 
You can adjust the specular intensity by tweaking the specular strength parameter. In order to better observe the transmission effect, I'll light the hair from the back and adjust the transmission strength to increase its intensity. The color of the secondary specular is related to the color of the hair. You can adjust the secondary specular intensity by tweaking the secondary specular slider. There is also a slider to control the roughness intensity. Specular strength can be used to adjust the specularity of the entire head of hair. This slider has influence over specularity, transmission, and secondary specularity. I hope you have learned a lot. Make sure to check out our forums at forum.reallusion.com and I hope to see you on the next video.